Go to school, get a job, and play it safe. Your parents are wrong. I remember the first time I told my parents I wanted to be a YouTuber at 16. My dad said, absolutely not. I was furious, but he turned around, looks at me, and says, prove me wrong then. Listen, it's 2021, and picking a career path is not linear. There's a new way to make money out of doing what you love, and it's called the creator economy. Guys, I'm here in France for the Ethereum conference. I'm running late, so fuck, I gotta run across this road. We're gonna learn all about the creator economy and answer these questions. Let's go! What's your name? Uh, hi, uh, I'm Elon. Marcus. My name is Hugh. Do you know what the creator economy is? I do know what the creator economy is, or I think I do. Uh, no. Uh, a economy of creators? Essentially allowing creators to monetize directly to their fan base with no intermediary, no middlemen. Is where people that are artists make money out of what they love to do. That's basically it. So now that you know what the creator economy is, you might be like, Jade, how do I get involved? How do I convince my strict parents that I'm not gonna end up as a starving artist? To answer this question, we're gonna ask some industry experts on how to get involved. Show is on. <laughs> so we're here about to shoot. My first blockchain interview. Um, just practicing. Are, are you nervous? A little bit. I think that like, <laughs> it's a little extra. <laughs> to be honest, I just wanted a good thumbnail. Like, I look like I, like I made it, you know? It looks like I made it. It looks like I made it. <clears throat> Meet Samantha. Samantha is the CEO at Yap Global, a PR agency for crypto companies, but she was also previously a journalist, creator, writer beforehand. Now she's also running a DAO to help content creators get into Web3. When you're looking for a work, it's also, it makes sense to kind of look for um, a role in a space that's growing. And I'm so passionate about the cryptocurrency and decentralized finance world. I actually, I mean, I'm an advocate for it. This is the future. I mean, decentralized finance is turning the traditional financial system on its head. And so if you're looking for opportunities, I would encourage everyone to consider DeFi. Now, in terms of like being daunted, like, your skills are needed. A lot of the protocols and the companies I work with, even our clients, they know for a fact that they struggle with communication and they struggle with, you know, they're not, they're, they, they, they acknowledge that they're like amazing techie guys. They know what they're doing, <laughs> but they're like, they, they actually get on calls with me when we're like pitching them. They're like, we know we don't know how to shout about what we do. We, we like, they're like our, our marketing's not so good we need help so they are crying for help but there is a lack in the market and so this is the opportunity for the creator economy okay jade but how do i really know if i want to go into crypto like how do i know what the best career path is for me this is paula paula is business development at linen labs she also has her own company and is a creator herself i mean first off don't just go for the first thing that appears like actually see what you're interested in like what is something that you can see yourself like really diving in and where there's passion, you're gonna find a career. Really find what is something that excites you because people are gonna feed on to that excitement and, and, and go from there. I really believe if you do what excites you and you're passionate about, you're gonna find money, but it might not be in the traditional way you expect. Take me for example, okay? I love making videos. When I was 16, I dropped out of school to make videos. I feel like a broken record, I keep saying that, but it's true, like I literally love making content so much that I wanted to commit my life, okay? My parents thought I was cuckoo crazy, right? And I told them I'm gonna make money from YouTube, but I expected to make money from AdSense, brand deals, and like, an influencer essentially in the beginning years. And to my surprise, I didn't make money that way, but I still made money by doing what I love, but it was a little different media. What I did was I started to make videos for other brands. I was a freelancer for a couple e-commerce companies in Portland. I was shooting videos for a handful, True Gear, which are small companies in my local area. And although I was still making YouTube videos, most of my money actually came from doing other gigs and opportunities that are still in my related field. The point is do what you love and money will find you. It just might not be the way you expected. So with that, let's dive in deeper of the two ways to make money in the creator economy. The first is becoming a creator, duh. The second is becoming a contributor. So let's dive into each. Becoming a creator in the creator economy is pretty obvious. It's creating something. It could be music, art, 
movie, a business, it could be anything. The most popular ways to monetize as a creator is getting an audience where you can sell them a product or partner with brands to sell your audience as advertising. Check out this video on how creators can make money in Web3. I explain more about how that works. Artists can sell anything from t-shirts, DVDs. What the fuck? Does anyone actually sell a DVD? <laughs> Anyways, creators can sell a bunch of products as merch. But one of the most popular ways recently to monetize and make a lot of money is through selling NFTs. Meet Gutierrez, who's going to explain what an NFT is. Uh, an NFT is an object stored on the blockchain. So basically, it means that you truly own the asset and no one can steal it from you. And each of these objects is unique. So I use this term object because an NFT can be thousands of different stuff from an artwork to an asset in a video game to uh, almost everything you imagine. Your ID, your degree, uh, even the furniture can potentially be an NFT. So it's just an asset, an object on the blockchain that you can purchase and you can use and no one can steal from you. So because you're the largest database, I'm going to quiz you on some data. Um, so if you don't get the numbers right, it's going to be very embarrassing. No, I'm just <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Like, oh, shoot. So much more <laughs> no, so a lot of people, maybe even artists and buyers might be speculating on, oh my gosh, NFT's a bubble. Can you talk a little bit more about like, you know, the data you've seen of like why you think NFT is not a bubble? Uh, you know, in a couple of months, the NFT industry went from something like 20 million USD traded past year for almost a billion in the past quarter. Oh, oh my God, that's Only a lot. Only on the blockchain. That's completely crazy. The money and opportunity in NFTs is massive. So essentially, parents, if you're watching this, your kid can make a lot of money selling art as NFTs in the crypto space. So the thing is that it's not because you are an artist that you are going to make money with NFTs. So at the end of the day, the NFT space has the exact same market rules than any other market. If you're good at what you do, if you love what you do, you'll succeed. If you just go there to make money, you're lost. With NFTs, everyone is looking at this as a technical mean. Like, I want to create an NFT. I want to buy an NFT. No one uh, really wants an NFT. You want an artwork. Mm. You want something you love. Shoot, we gotta switch these words. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta, don't sell an NFT, sell art, sell connection, exactly. sell engagement. So if you ever hear from your parents that going into arts is dumb and you should go into a STEM career, you should let them know that it's actually pretty related. And that's exactly why I went to a cryptocurrency conference in the first place. Blockchain companies and NFTs and all these, you know, crypto stuff need creators to bring their products to market. And that's a lot of money and opportunity for us creators to profit off of. Now, the second way you could be involved in the creator economy is becoming a contributor. This is for someone who doesn't necessarily want to be the artist, but wants to help other artists. Jobs in this field can be community managers. You can work for another creator as an editor. You can run a company that helps other creators, like my agency that helps creators monetize. So I, yeah, started working as a journalist. Um, I'm a journalist by training. I studied at uni. And then I fell into fintech PR. So but before that, I really had no experience of like finance or understanding of like even technology. Then in this fintech PR role, I, you know, st uh, started working with a blockchain and cryptocurrency company. And um, my client at the time taught me how to use Bitcoin to buy Ethereum. So I kind of got hooked. I fell down the rabbit hole of crypto. Again, I didn't know much about technology or about finance, but I just learned kind of just by reading. I even did like a short course. And so that was like late 2017. I, I didn't have a job at the time and I was kind of looking for work, looking what to do. So I just started writing about crypto and then companies started approaching me needing PR support. So I wrote a few stories for them and then um, I started getting approached by companies to do their PR, but I didn't want to stick to one company. so. I just created like my first like deck basically and I was like, hey, I can help you with PR, get them in the media, like pitch them. So kind of on the other side, right? Like PR and some journalism. And then, um, yeah, because the ICO creator took up, there were so many companies like, you know, one client, I had one client, they referred me to another, mm -hmm. more started to come. And then I was like, hey, I have, I'm, I'm serving a need here because there is a gap in the market of communicators, marketers, graphic designers, social media managers, like you were talking about creator economy. There's a gap in the market in this space to basically translate what you know these companies are trying to do, these projects are trying to do, and make it easy to understand for normies. For normies. <laughs> for normies. And 
you know, if they don't make their um, project easy to understand, then how else are they going to have people adopting and using right. their application? Yeah. So like I said, when I dropped out of school to make videos full time, I was freaking out because I was living in my parents' room. I had only a thousand subscribers, less than a thousand dollars in my bank account, and I had no plan. Oh, and by the way, I moved to LA with like barely any money. <laughs> what I realized is any art takes a while to get off the ground running. You can hear startups that take three years of just burning money before maybe they make any penny. I think when you have to have that enough patience with something, you need to find other ways to support yourself in the meantime, potentially. So if you're young, maybe you can just live at home and like live minimally, but I wanted to move out and get out of my fucking town because my friends didn't really support YouTube. So I decided to make money by helping other brands making videos for them and freelancing however I could. It was a hustle, definitely was. But over time, let's just say my income maybe was 100% freelancing and 0% content, it switched. And now I would say most of my time is building my own brand, but that took three to four years of basically not making any money before I got here. If you're someone that's having an issue convincing their parents to let you do what you want in a creative career, let me give you this best advice. I would just show them your one year plan, okay? I don't care if it's you're gonna follow it. A plan doesn't need to be a step-by-step, -step, it just needs to be a direction, okay? I have this video right here where you guys can learn how I make one year plans of generating revenue. Go check it out. I remember I sat down with my dad, literally spreadsheet and all, and I pitch them. I pitch them like, hey, I have this idea of making content, but I also have this agency and service that I'm going to contribute. These are, you know, a couple of my projects and checks and show it to them and be like, you know, if you don't have those numbers, just show it like, hey, my friend Cassandra or my friend Jade on YouTube, you know, she charged $100 an hour making videos in the beginning and then that paid for her, you know, rent of like 1K. So just showcasing a little bit of a plan, talking with them, I think is super helpful because I think a part of it is like re-educating our parents and just showing them of what's possible and you know you can use me for example you can use other youtubers that have made it like if they know that there are people that are taking paths similar to you they'd be most likely to accept now I understand there's some parents who like are completely against it and sometimes what you have to do is do what I do which is a uh, don't ask for permission ask for forgiveness which is like basically make money first and then show them that you need their support because for a long time, like they need to see it to believe it. And even if you make the money, they might not even support you, which is the hardest thing. I think this journey's hard. Trust me guys, like I still struggle with this every day. Maybe it's not my parents, but maybe it's my friends and they think I'm poor, unsuccessful and like dumb. And like, I just have to like really do it for myself. Like at the end of the day, everything I'm saying here is sometimes to convince yourself you're enough. You really only need your own voice to say, I'm worthy, I got this. And like, yes, like convincing your parents is helpful, but like do it again, for yourself. I think sometimes the hardest thing is convincing ourselves that we're enough, convincing ourselves that we have enough skill to make money. And you're not alone. I wanna let you guys know this channel, this community, this Dharma Nation is a bunch of creators, artists, entrepreneurs just trying to figure shit out. And I don't even have everything figured out. This video even is hard for me to make because like giving advice on how to prove people that you're enough is something I struggle with. But I hope this video was helpful and you guys could take away something from it. By the way, if you're someone who wants to work in the creator economy, but you physically don't know where to start. My company is hiring. My company is X8 Media. We're an influencer agency that works with brands like Netflix, HP, HBO Max, all that fun stuff. And if you guys apply today till next Monday, the 23rd on August, you guys can have the opportunity to sign up to get work in the creator economy for the first time. We're hiring three positions. We're super fun. We're a global company, any age, any demographic, any race accepted. And I can't wait to see what you guys got. Check the link below. The application does close in one week. So run over there and show me what you got. And I can't wait to see y'all. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>